me. I'm from Brooklyn. I'm from Maryland. I live in Brooklyn. Um, that's my blog that only has posts on it this weekend every year and then never again. <laughs> <laughs> so this time last year, I was getting ready to start a new school, getting ready to start a new subject. I never taught geometry. And a bunch of us got together in the lobby in Chase, Oklahoma, and we were talking about this. Julie and Sam and I were like, what the hell are we going to do? So one of the things that came up was the fact that kids don't understand that these are the same angle. They'll come here and tell you that this one is much bigger. Now, as soon as someone told that to me, I was like, oh, well, I understand why they would think that. But before someone had told that to me, it never, ever, ever would have occurred to me. And then I started to freak out because I thought, oh my god, there's all these things that experienced teachers take for granted that I don't know about. So. I thought it would be great if there's a place where we could collect some of these like basic misconceptions for a lot of the basic topics that we teach and put them all in one place. So use the hundreds of years of experience between all of us and start to share, especially with newer teachers or teachers teaching new things. So what I did was I came up with first like third. And I figured out how to use Bitly yesterday to make that easier on everyone. That's not what I want. Here. So um, right now it's a Google Doc. And you'll notice I have a short explanation that we set up. And then there's all these different subjects on the bottom. And I suppose I didn't have to go to that. So for example, this is the Algebra 1 standard. So we have topics, basic things like slope, what not to say. So basically things that you don't want to say to your kids because it'll just send them on this wrong track. Like just word choice, you all know, makes a big difference in how you present certain things. So what you should say instead. It's sort of an explanation for it. And then there's a space to add your contact info. So uh, James helped, Matt helped, Meg helped, Sam helped. Lots of people have added to it already. Um, there's, I know some people have said to me before, there's some overlap with Nick's the Tricks. Um, not exactly, because I think some of the things that we, they're not tricks. It's not a, the big angle thing. It's not a, it's not a trick. It's just a, it's an easy way for kids to get confused that you can easily avoid if someone just says, oh, don't do that. And some of you are lucky and have a school that this happens, but you don't get to, you don't have time to run everything by the more experienced teachers. So hopefully this could start to help. Um, Michael Prashan's Math Mistakes is really, really cool. It's a really great conversation to have. However, at 10.30 at night when I have two more lessons to plan, I don't have time to sit there and be intellectual about what the kids are wrong about. So I was looking for a list that was just quick, like I'm teaching vertical angles tomorrow. What are three things I have to avoid? Um, this is still a work in progress. I'm relatively new to all of this compared to some of you, so I welcome any suggestions you might have. The second thing I wanted to talk about, um, I talked about this at lunch yesterday, it's something called Delta Math. It's an online homework assignment system. It's free, which is nice. Um, it was created by a teacher in New York City, so if any of you have heard of Zach Korzik, he created this hall himself. Um, and it's awesome. This is a teacher interface. It's really easy to use. So you've got the topics, like the basic courses in the middle. And then this over here, you can create an assignment. Creating an assignment is super, super simple. You just go in, click Create Assignment. You can name it whatever you want. And then you can open each course, and there's drop-down menus for all the different topics that they have. I think it says that there's over 600 different sections of topics. And what's great about this is that each section just generates uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of problems. And each problem is different. So you can just go in and rather than having to look for like different textbooks and find 15 different sets of problems, you just give your kids this and they work through it. And what's nice is that it saves a lot of time because it takes me maybe, maybe 10 minutes if I'm really thinking about it to put together an assignment. And that's if I'm being really slow and tweeting at the same time. <laughs> um, a couple other great things about this. You can have a required number of problems for each section. So say I want them to work on five factoring problems. Like they have to get five factoring problems correct. So I set five, and then I can set a penalty. The way this works, to get credit for it, kids have to complete a certain number of problems correct. So every time you get a problem correct, you get a point, and depending on how you set it up, if you get a problem wrong, maybe you don't get anything, you don't lose anything, or you can set so you lose one point, or you can set it so it goes back to zero. The benefit there being that your kids have to get five questions in a row correct. So it's really great for like rote problem solving. 
Uh, it's just skills you really want them to practice and practice and practice. You can also create mixed problems. So one of the things we'll do, for example, is um, for test reviews and for the Regents exam review, so the state exam review, we just created a giant, super big assignment that had all of the problems listed. And so they get a question about factoring quadratics, and then a question about simplifying rationals, and then a question about graphing asymptotes, all this crazy stuff. Um, and it's nice and mixed, and the kids can go in and see. And you can also add timed assignments for drills and that kind of thing. This is the kind, I just realized they don't actually have a problem here, something here showing you what a problem looks like, so I'll show you one in a second. Um, this is the information you get as students complete their assignments. You see I have all the assignments across the top, and then the scores the students are getting. And when I click on details, it'll give me the details for each specific assignment. So I think for applications of trig, it was like, I don't know, trig identities and some unit circle practice and other things like that. Um, so if you give me all the assignments and so I can see exactly, so let's say Johnny is doing really well with factory quadratics, but doesn't know a damn thing about reading a graph and finding the roots. So then I can target exactly where the student is having mistakes. The other thing it shows you is if I go into a student's, this is from our summer assignment, if I go into a student's page, I can see exactly how many problems they've done for each one. I can see how many problems they've gotten wrong for each section. So each little X is a problem. And what's great is I can click on those little check marks or the X's and actually see what their answer was for that problem. So I can go in and see what they're doing wrong. The great thing also about it is that as students are sitting here trying to do these, if they're getting problems wrong, they have two options. They can all, it'll say show example problems, so they can click on that. It'll show them just like a run through of how the problem works. And they can say, oh, so I'm, I'm supposed to add first and then divide or whatever. I don't know why you do that, but whatever. Um, it gives them an example problem they can work from. And then it'll also show them, if they get the answer wrong, it'll show them exactly how that problem should have been solved and what the answer should be. There are also some help videos. You see the little blue film strip? There are some help videos on there, so kids can click on that and see. Um, and then it also gives me a problem log, so I can sit there and see that uh, Isabella was doing problems at 10 o'clock this morning, Eastern time. Um, and Waleed was up until 1 o'clock last night doing problems. So sometimes I've had to have conversations that maybe 3 a.m. is not the time to be finishing your Algebra 2 homework. Um, and it'll also tell me if they got it wrong, and I can actually see exactly what the problem was that they were working on. Other features, there's a high scoreboard, um, so you can set up competitions in your class. They get real into competing with each other. That's my eight minutes, I need to speed up. Um, <laughs> that, they get real into competing with each other. We have competitions between classes. Whoever gets the most, does the most problems gets bonus points or some nonsense. Um, there's a cheating detector by IP address, so you can see if like, I don't know, Johnny is doing the problems for the entire school, that would be the thing. Um, it can get a little buggy sometimes, you have to be careful with that, because, um, here we student view, this one does. Um, sometimes it'll say an answer's wrong, even though it's exactly the same right answer, so you have, kids will get frustrated, but if you email Zach, he'll explain it to you. Just to give you a quick idea, this, from teacher view, you can go in and see what it looks like for students. This is an example of a simplifying radical problem, so express in simplest form. You can enter it here. And then if I'm, I don't know what that means, well, that's not a good example. Um, <laughs> here. So it says square root of 24, what perfect square divides into 24? It shows you some examples. 4 goes into 24 evenly, blah, blah, blah. So it gives students an example. Let's say I go back to my original problem, 63, I'm going to say. Eight. Yes, I'm sure that's obviously wrong. And again, it'll tell me how to solve that particular problem. Okay. Um, and there's another section for writing assignments they just added. So if you just want to have kids reflect on things, you can have them do that. That's my favorite. Thank you very much.